ace has it less than or equal to, so if it's 32, then both then formulas both work. Yeah. That's right. So if I did this, now they're, new, now they're what we call mutually exclusive. Right? And they won't be executed at the same time. Now, granted that you can't have water at 32 degrees and have it not be frozen. Um, <coughs> because the state change takes energy itself. Not but not we're not chemists. <laughs> not what? It's under pressure. Is it? If it's un yeah, right. <laughs> if it's at a different pressure, at one atmosphere. Come on. Okay. okay. So if I change this, if I change temp now to 20, sorry, to 20. Now the first my line 44 gets executed, but line 48 does not. Okay. So these are mutually exclusive cases. And there's actually, actually Swift lets you write the mutually exclusive cases in a really compact way. And most other languages too. We call it adding an else clause. And it's really neat because it actually mimics English to some degree, but still in a, uh, in a very mechanical and computerized way, which is good for us. If temp is less than or equal to 32, then print freezing. Else, print not freezing. So in that case, now if I change to 40, the second clause gets executed. So this is this first clause after if and before else is the true clause that gets executed if that's if the condition here evaluates to true. But this one gets evaluated if it's equal to if it's equal to false. See how we're now we are in control. We are controlling the flow of execution from top to bottom. How does it know that the, because you don't have true or false defined, like within the code, mm -hmm. so how does it know if you just change temp to, if you just change that to true, true that... Like that? <laughs> yeah. What's it going, what's going on? Like um, how does, yeah. That's right. So, true and false are actually keywords in the language. Okay. They are built into the language. So they come for free, just like if and else. But if and else are keywords that represent control flow, and true and false are, are built-in constants that represent truthness and falseness in terms of booleans, boolean types. Does that make sense? Yeah, but how does it know, like, what is the if true even referring to? Because At there could this point? Be, yeah, because couldn't there be, like, a bunch of different true-false statements within there? Like, you're not referencing the temp in that statement. That's right, I'm not referencing it at all. So this is actually something that I would probably never write, okay. ever. That just, it's just value-wise, it's equivalent. You notice how it gives me a warning here? If I click on that little warning symbol, it says, will never be executed. So I've actually created, I've written a chunk of code that it'll never reach. So the, the control flow will never actually get to that, that block of code. Not an error, your app will work just fine. But you might encounter situations where you probably would have wanted that to execute and it never did. This is a very common, this is a, well, a not so common occurrence in debugging, but it can sometimes happen. So can you use the word true anywhere? Yes, you can. You can use it anywhere you want. As, a, as long variable. as it's uh, not as a variable, but okay. as a constant. So you cannot define a variable named true. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting question. Keyword true cannot be used as an identifier. Bummer. It gets a lot more fun in older languages that uh, incidentally they let you do that. Mm -hmm. They can do some pretty interesting hacking. Right. I can't remember the language that allowed you to use uh, uh, the true and false constants so that you can change what they mean. Right. Got it. Yeah. <coughs> it's, it's pretty sweet. So does Swift not have uh, else if? Does. Oh, it does. It does indeed. So the case here is, oh, well, these two cases are mutually exclusive. But what if I had cases, what if I had more cases that I wanted to add to this? For example, water has more than just two states of matter, and it's three. So what if I wanted to account for those uh, in Swift, in this chunk of code here? The way that Swift lets me do that 
is by adding a clause that uses both, both else and if again, like this. But it lets me, re it lets me write another condition after it. So that condition might look something like this, if temp is greater than or equal to 212. Print line. Void. And then I'm going to change this from not freezing to and with an, with an obligatory exclamation mark because it's really exciting. Okay. So this is what happens. My temp variable is 40. When I get to the if statement, it evaluates this condition, temp less than or equal to 32. And it says, that operator evaluates to false. Therefore, I cannot execute this first clause within the first set of braces. Then it gets to this second clause, and it says, well, otherwise, let me evaluate this condition temp greater than or equal to 212. It says 40 greater than or equal to 212 also evaluates to false. Therefore, I cannot execute the code here. And then it says, oh, well, I'm done. In all other cases, I actually got to the bottom of all of this. So then I'll just execute this code by default. I don't have to check for anything. I just know since I got there, I'll go ahead and execute. So, if I change temp to 400, now this clause gets executed. Because by the time Swift got to this expression, that expression, that operator, evaluates to true. Therefore, it's told to evaluate this clause and no others. Only evaluates that clause and then jumps out of it. It goes immediately to line 50 and continues. Does that make sense? What I would like you to do, um, I think in pairs, for the next 10 minutes, I would like you to write out clauses like this, maybe at least five clauses, that print what you would wear if the temperature were within that particular range. Let's start at uh, let's start at 20, 30 degrees. And work our way up to 80 degrees. In increments of 10, maybe, or whatever increments you want. Sure. Okay. Pair up. So my number is pairing three. up, guys. Try to pair up with someone that you haven't paired up already with.
So, you know why? Because, so, like, what 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 so,
that was just it. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just uh, remember, just keep in mind, remember, your if statement is evaluating a Boolean. It doesn't matter how you construct that Boolean. So that's the So when you see, this is a round of C, and you're going to that. That's right. So essentially, for each of the else's, we have to take the, the previous degree, and then it's... I was trying to spell it as like, if, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if it's greater than the previous degree. Yeah, yeah, can you see the difference? Just read this as yeah. and, yeah. and read this as or. Yep. This and this. So you see the, it's good to write your variable in the middle and put your ranges on the outside just as a convention to get your mind thinking in terms of this value is less than this and this value is less than this. Okay. So it doesn't really matter, but this is how the pros do it. That's how the pros do it. And you're on the, you're on the track to be a pro. So see if you can get it without using this first, like because you because you know that this is about this is checked first, and then it checks this, and then it checks this, and it goes so check 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 all the way down. Just see if you can figure out a way of tricking it using the flow to stop when you want it to stop. Swift is going to check this first, and then it's going to, and then if that's false, then it's going to check this one. And if that's false, it'll check the next one, and then the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And it's always going to check in that order. Right? It's very reliable, top down. Does that make sense? Not 
to kind of ask you how much sense do you have for what I do have to what you what you what you have to say about talking saying words and translate it into a sentence. That certainly works, huh? but isn't that redundant? Number 16 is less than 30, but it's also less than 40. Yeah, so I'll go to 16 and less than 30. So it's always going to go until it hits a statement that's true. Mm -hmm. That's right. As opposed to doing like between 40 and 50. That's right. So the answer here is no, you don't. Okay. That's exactly what I was going over. I was, try I was trying to tempt them into okay. understanding as well. You don't need to use the end operators. Some kind, sometimes it's better um, because the conditions aren't always going to be about numeric ranges like this. Yeah. The conditions are going to be wildly different things. Yeah. Um, but it's useful to understand that it actually evaluates from top down. You can leverage that. For oh, some so okay. Still, still here. Okay. So try adding, just try adding an else if an else if clause. Can you help me with that? So part of what's going on here is it's very good to engage the code and just try it. Right? And try to try to examine what the user is. So try to poke and prod at it and see what happens. Because um, that way you actually start to learn about it. It must just like, be most of the like, like, some coders. Like, we're just we're, we're all we're doing is like, like, the ethos of the coder skill is to break down the problem and then just solve one little piece of it at a time. Right. Right. So then sit back and make it Well, I thought maybe if I if I assigned it to nothing, this doesn't. This was just not trust. Because technically, the variable doesn't exist yet until it actually hits something. Yeah. So I wonder if there's a way to put it below all of those. I'm just curious. Why is it printing on this line? Thank you. 
took too long, so I'm going to show so I'm going to show you all what that kind of what that looks like. So the point is of doing this particular exercise is now I can demonstrate <coughs> how an if statement, how the, how the pattern of an if statement's execution can affect which clause is executed at a given time. So the current temperature is 55. So it gets to this first, uh, it gets to this first uh, conditional clause, current temp greater than 80. That evaluates to false, so therefore it does not execute this bluff that's, that's here. Then it moves to the next one and does the same check, current temp greater than 70, evaluates to false, and therefore it does not execute shorts. And then it comes down here, like jacket, same condition, 55 is not greater, is not greater than 60. And then it gets to here, same, where am I? Okay, current temp greater than 50. That's true. 55 is indeed greater than 50. So therefore I print sweat over here. See how that works? Yeah. All of them. Not, it's not about where you the, the, the order of them. So exactly. You the current current above the sweater and then you screw it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So if I had reversed this whole thing, I would always end up oh, like with with another with uh, with one of those with one of the cases. Like I would always end up with code, for example, for everything greater than forty because it would be executed first, and then the instant I dropped to the thirty-nine, I would just get lost, which would which would mean that all those intermediate clauses would be. So you have to be really careful using this if else pair this else if paradigm and be very aware of the word. Okay. Awesome. Now what we're gonna do is um C seven fifty three. I think I think this is a great time to take a five minute break.